Good day, fellow Hoplophiles. This is the Vortex Razor HD Gen 3 1 to 10 by 24 FFP. There's a lot going on in that name, so let's unpack some of it and I'll give you some of my thoughts on it. This is a 1 to 10 power LPVO or low power variable optic. LPVOs are so in right now because they pack a lot of functionality into a single site. Action rifle matches are a sort of laboratory for what techniques and equipment result in quick hits at close to medium range and LPVOs have risen to the top in that arena. No, a two gun match is not exactly a combat simulation, but the factors that win a match tend to be the factors that win gunfights too. Namely, fast, accurate shooting and LPVOs allow shooters to engage targets at close range quickly at low magnification, then crank it up to reach out to targets that are further away. This site's 1 to 10 magnification range is enormous. Now, a few years ago, nobody made anything more than a 1 to 4 power. Now, 1 to 6 is pretty common, and there are some out there that are 1 to 8 power too. 10 times magnification for the upper end is absolutely unheard of, and it's a pretty big deal. The FFP part of the product name refers to the fact that the reticle is in the first focal plane. What that means is that the reticle stays the same size relative to the object's downrange as you zoom. So put another way, when you increase magnification, not only does the target get larger, so too does the reticle. Now that matters because it means the math behind the ranging features and the bullet drop compensator is still valid at any magnification setting. This is something that's a bit of a personal preference. Now some folks will tell you that second focal plane is better because you only need ranging features at high magnification and you can use the donut or horseshoe or whatever elements in the scope to sort of frame the target for a fast shot up close rather than spending too much time lining up a small center dot or chevron. Other folks will say that sometimes the higher end of magnification is just too much for intermediate distance targets because it reduces the, the field of view too much. And if you're under stress and fail to turn the mag magnification all the way to the stop, you might not notice, which would introduce error to the range estimation. Now, I don't have strong feelings either way, except that it's hard to see the reticle at 1x in some FFP sites. Starting at your eye, the first adjustment on the site is the diopter, and that's under this rubber lens cap here. This allows you to adjust the site to match your own eye. The included lens caps are absolutely fantastic, really. Lots of scopes come with caps, but they kind of suck. These have a rubber sleeve that really locks it on there tightly, keeps the diopter set where it needs to be, and they also have a detent that locks them in the open position. That keeps them from flopping around if the spring breaks. Honestly, these are good enough that I'm thinking about buying another set for a different scope. Moving forward, we have the magnification adjustment ring. The scope came with a throw lever that mounts securely and makes it easy to quickly change magnification. Most scopes that I've handled are either too soft or too stiff, and this one is actually one of the few that get it right, at least for me. It's kind of subjective, but this is just the right amount of resistance to this throw lever for me. On the left side is the brightness adjustment. Yes, it goes all the way up to 11, which I'm pretty happy about. It also has an off position between each level, which allows you to turn it on quickly without having to think about which direction to turn it. Either way you go is going to be close to the brightness that you want. And you can lock the dial. Now, I don't know how important that feature is because it really takes fairly intentional effort to turn the dial, but it's a feature that some people might find useful. The adjustment turrets are wide and easy to move, but they have bold, obvious clicks. You could easily remove them and make adjustments while wearing gloves. Once the sight's zeroed, you can remove the center screw and re-index them. That means you can put your dope on the sight in the field and return to zero pretty easily. Now the first thing that really jumps out at you about the reticle is that it really jumps out at you. <laughs> Now, I'm not kidding, this thing is crazy bright. I was going to say foreign etched reticle, but that gives the impression that it's not really that bright. Now, I'm not going to say that it's brighter than reflex sights, but it can absolutely hang with them. Usually, when people ask if an etched reticle is daylight bright, what they're really asking is if you can tell that it's illuminated. Is it bright enough to provide decent contrast against shadowed or dark colored target areas during the daylight? And in that context, it does matter. You can see all the dark basalt rock in the area 
around me where I shoot. It's really handy to have a little contrast against this dark gray steel target in a field of black boulders. But this reticle really is daylight bright in the sense that it pops, even if you're standing in direct sunlight and shooting white paper targets against a light colored berm that's also in full sun. And at one power, the scope body practically disappears. Now, like all LPVOs, there is an eye box. You do need to get your head in the right position on the stock. So if you're doing rollover prone underneath a vehicle, maybe you won't be as fast with this as you would with a reflex. But the eye box is large enough that if you have anything resembling a cheek weld, the reticle's gonna be visible and it'll feel a lot more like a reflex than most other LPVOs that I've used. I don't wanna belabor this point too much because we still have a lot to cover, but it's hard for you to get a good feel for how great this looks at one axon video. And there, there is slight distortion around the edges, but otherwise this scope is the closest to a red dot that I have ever seen in LPVO. At the same time, because this is an etched reticle, if you have astigmatism, the reticle should look much clearer to you than a reflex or a holographic sight. When you crank up the magnification, the ranging and BDC features become visible. It has a sort of Christmas tree arrangement that you've seen on lots of other sites. There's a quite a bit going on here, and if you're the kind of guy who prefers a clean reticle without a whole lot of different points on it, you're not gonna like this. I've seen busier reticles, but this is up there. Of course, that's necessary to provide the functionality that this scope brings to the table. The center dot is one MOA. The vertical line beneath has holds at every 50 yards from 300 to 650, as indicated by the numbers three through six off to the side of that line. The dots to the side are wind holds for five to 20 miles per hour crosswinds as indicated by the numbers at the bottom of the tree. There is also an MOA scale below and to either side. If you know the drop for your load in MOA and you can range the target, you could use the vertical MOA scale to stretch the range way past the 650 yard hole. Above the center of the reticle is a scale for ranging either the shoulders of a target or the height of the torso. This sort of arrangement is likely familiar to you if you've used other sites with ranging and BDC features built into the reticle. What's a little different in this case is that it also has a couple of MOA scales and the manual gives subtensions in MOA for practically every point on the reticle. The reason that matters is that this allows a lot more precise ranging and it allows you to, use, to range using objects that are not necessarily the same size of, as an average adult American man. If you can't get a good look at the target shoulders or full torso height, but you see an object at the same distance and you know what the size of that object is in inches, say a stop sign or a fence post, you can calculate the distance easily. Now in a hurry, you just multiply actual size of the target by 100 and then divide by measured MOA. But to get a precise range, multiply the target size by 95.5, then divide by measured MOA. Overall, this scope is pretty big. You don't really notice it until you place it next to another LPVO, but it's noticeably bigger than the primary arms one to six power Raptor FFP. Heavier too, but by a small margin. Of course, the Raptor has a narrower magnification range too. So, what would you use this for? It would be a fantastic choice for action rifle matches and hunting small to medium sized game. It would be perfect for a duty carbine, especially in a rural department. It would be well suited to a fighting rifle that's intended to engage targets anywhere from zero to 650 yards at the least. Is it an ideal choice for home defense? Eh, probably not, unless your home defense rifle is also your do everything carbine. I know a lot of you guys like the concept of one gun to rule them all, and that is really the perfect fit for this site. It would be most at home on a multi-role rifle. So if you have one AR that you use for coyote hunting, home defense, and fighting norks, this scope would probably fit that role perfectly. The big question hanging in the air is, is this scope worth three grand? In the strictest Econ 101 sense, that question's real easy. Yeah, of course it is. People are paying that, therefore that's what it's worth. That's how markets work. Markets are the most efficient way of determining value. If Vortex was unable to sell more than a handful of these, it would be fair to say that they're overpriced. But when people ask if something is worth a given price, I think what they really mean is, will I be disappointed if I buy this? Or maybe they mean, 
is there another option at lower cost that gives me just as much functionality? Those questions are a little harder to answer, but I'll take a step. Unless you had unrealistic expectations, I doubt you would be disappointed in this site. It's not going to turn you into an expert marksman. But if you're already a pretty competent rifleman, this site is a fantastic tool to increase hit probability. I couldn't identify any substantive deficiencies. What's more, I couldn't even come up with any subjective dislikes that I felt strongly about, and that's pretty rare. I've always got something to complain about. Is there another site that can give you just as much functionality as this guy? I, I, I mean, yeah, kind of. There are lower cost LPVOs out there that have ranging and BDC reticles. Not many are one to 10 power, and they aren't going to be quite as clear. They're sure as hell not going to have a reticle that's as bright as this one is. This is hands down the brightest etched reticle I've ever used. But all in all, you can absolutely buy an LPVO that gives you 80% of the functionality for 20% of the price, or less. And that brings us to the real center of the issue. There's no shortage of people who will tell you in the comments under this video that they can get something just as good for less money. And they say the same thing about lots of high-end optics and lights and guns and cars or whatever, and that's simply not true. But the quality differences between a $500 site and a $3,000 site are more subtle than between a $500 site and a $30 site. So if you want a top quality, outstanding site that makes no compromises, this is definitely a contender. I hope I've given you enough information to make an informed choice. You're the only one who can make it though. If you enjoy content like this and wanna help us keep making it, please consider visiting our sponsor TNVC especially if you like seeing stuff more than not seeing stuff and you don't hate capitalism. Even if you can't make it over there, we're still grateful for the support you give just by making it to the end of the video. Remember that engagement metrics such as liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing help YouTube algorithms decide what content you see. So if you want YouTube to recommend more videos like this one, be sure to engage with the video. Thanks for watching. I love you.